And it's Gersanov's theorem, it's a very famous in stochastic analysis. Again, you can derive it by just discretizing everything and going down the T limits. Nothing spectacular. There's a formal condition that this is finite. I mean, the cost, uh, there's a deterministic part here that has to be finite. I mean, otherwise, it's uh, not a good thing. Okay. And now here's what people already in Monte Carlo have done uh, for many years. And it also appears in rare event simulations and it appears in molecular dynamics and many fields related that you say, okay, I have let's say this is my prior, this gives me my prior measure P. Then I have the data which gives me a Q star, which is the posterior distribution which my model should produce seeing the data. Can I adjust my model so that it reproduces this distribution? Yes, I can. So I change this so that this gives me, um, well, I called it, well, P equal Q naught, no, no change. And then I change it. So this gives me the Q U. So I change the drift. And I want to do this so that it becomes equivalent with the Q star. Right, and um, um, and we will, um, of course, it has a, there's a price tag coming with this. So yes, it is possible, and it tells you basically, it tells you also something about the model errors, right? So if there's a systematic contribution that appears in this uh, control term, you have to add to the dynamics to steer your model to the observations, to fit to the observations, then, uh, and if there's a con systematic contribution, then this is now also being employed, uh, exploited in data simulation by saying, okay, well, maybe that's something we want to always add to the model. So you make, say, this is an improved model in a way. Um, so this is, uh, but this is a consequence of Gersanov's theorem that you can do this, right? Um, Right, and so, and basically the rest of it is, 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 is um, I'm not gonna probably go through everything, but um, we'll do it after lunch then, is basically saying all this filtering, smoothing, da 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 da, can be seen as changing the model dynamics in a clever way so that it fits the bill. And the bill is the posterior distribution. The distribution that has seen the model, the original model, plus the observation. So you want to have a modified model that gets it exactly right. And I'm gonna do this in um, continuous time because there it's just the, the, it's, uh, the most elegant formulation. But you can do it in discrete time as well, but it's gonna be nasty because you always have to switch between uh, different, um, like the discrete time of your model and the discrete time of your observations. So you can't trust fit it into a single sort of compact picture. Um, okay, so let's go back to the 60s. Kalman and Bussi, linear SDEs. So the SDE is now linear, so this is now a linear drift, and this remains as it, as it was. These are all just matrices, uh, forward operator linear, all Gaussian, initial distributions are Gaussian. We know that if a system is linear, the transformations are linear, we have a Gaussian, Gaussian is transformed under a linear thing, remains Gaussian, everything is Gaussian. And so all I need to track are the means and the covariance matrices. So this is the mean and the covariance matrix of the model alone, this is the mean and the covariance matrix of the filtering problem, and that's the one for the filtering problem. And I now like to, and, and that, is stuff from the 60s. You get evolution equations for the mean and the covariance matrix, matrices. So that's for the mean. You basically just forget the noise uh, because that the average of the Brownian motion is zero. The mean of the Brownian motion is zero. Um, and this is for the covariance matrix. In the covariance matrix, you see the, uh, the error appearing as Q. So, and then, of course, also under the dynamics, the, the covariance matrix changes. Um, and, and then Kalman and Bussi 
they shown that if you uh, want to change these equations, taking into account the data, it is of this form. So the mean gets an augmented term Kalman gain matrix. We saw it already a few times. This is a continuous time version. Also, this um, um, I uh, you often have in, in, in data simulation. There's an R here. The, I'd set it to one, so there's no R anymore. But it's just just to keep it a little bit uh, simple, um, because otherwise you would have the R inverse here, here, and here. But I I, I, I made it identity. So this is again the covariance matrix appears. Innovation, you compare your best estimate with the data, and there's a corresponding update of the, of the covariance. Right? Have you all seen that? Okay. Um, there's also a corresponding smoother version. And it's a bit like 4D var and just in a single iteration. So you go forward and you go backward. Filtering forward, smoothing an equation you solve backward in time. So uh, you start at the end time. You start with the filter solution at the end point, and then you solve that equation backward in time. And you get, again, sort of a nudging term, an augmentation of your model equation. You run backwards in time. The black stuff is which you get just the model, and the red stuff is what is being added. Anyway, stuff from the, I think this was Triple uh, and Kalman Busse, and then there were some other people. I mean, that uh, basically came, came up with it. Again, it's just 60s. Now, what gets us to the ensemble Kalman filter? It's a very simple idea. And I'm still amazed that, that nobody seems to have talked about this up to the ensemble Kalman filter. And that's like 30 years, over 30 years. Um, and I call it the McKean Vlasov representation. McKean, uh, physicist, mathematician at Kurang Institute, uh, he was in the 60s starting to think about interacting particle systems. Now, the ensemble Kalman filter is a way of an interacting particle system, right? So you have your ensembles. Under the model, they propagate independently. But when you go to the ensemble, the assimilation step, they start talking to each other through the covariance and the mean. So they interact. Um, and so. But mathematically, the structure underneath is that you're deriving an SDE, a stochastic differential equation, where the evolution itself requires that you know something about the distribution of the solution. Now, this sounds a really complicated sentence, right? Um, so you basically, you have to know the covariance and the mean itself to write down the equations of motion, these modified differential equations, for the particles itself. So we're not deriving it anymore for the mean and the covariance matrix. I really go back to the model and change the model equations on the level of its realizations. So it's an SDE, but the SDE, as I said again, requires that you know the, the moments. And that's what it is. And that looks damn like the Kalman filter already. So it's, but it's also the linear. So again, the original equation, the original model, I mean, this is just the model itself, so this remains. Um, and you have this now, this is also the Kalman gain. The innovation is slightly different, right? And it's the same thing you have to be careful about on the ensemble Kalman filter that you either perturb stochastically or you have to tweak things a little bit. Um, so, so here in the continuum time limit, it means if you take the average of the best estimate and the value of the realization itself, and you compare this with the data. So before, it was just this, right, in the mean. And of course, if you take the mean of these equations, that becomes the mean. So you're back to the classic Kalman filter. So if you go through and you compute the mean, this goes away. This becomes the mean. This becomes the mean. You're back to Kalman, right? But we're now at the level of the solutions itself. And it's, it's McKean Vlasov because you need to know the mean itself, and you need to mean the covariance matrix because the gain involves the covariance matrix. And the smoother is the same thing backward. You can also write down an equation for the particles itself. So you can solve this SDE. Of course, you cannot solve it just with a single trajectory. Uh, but if you do an ensemble of trajectories, you see where I'm getting at. 
uh, then I can empirically estimate all these quantities and I have the ensemble common fit. And I also have a backward version for the linear case, right? But that's sort of the, the mathematical compression of this idea. Um, now there's uh, a wonderful generalization of this because now what you do in the ensemble Kalman filter is essentially you keep that part and you say now I can also, if this is a nonlinear object, the real nonlinear drift, I can plug it in and I still have a filter algorithm and that gives you essentially a continuous time version of the ensemble Kalman filter. So you, you just said, okay, in the linear case, this is perfect. In the nonlinear case, I keep that, I mean, uh, this now becomes imperfect because it relies on Gaussian approximation, but this part I can make nonlinear. This you can also make nonlinear, of course. So it generalizes easily, but we also know that it's statistically not coherent. What you're doing is, is, is introducing a bias, but you know, okay, not too bad. But there's actually a way to make it correct, perfectly correct. And it's called a particle filter, part feedback particle filter. The same idea, um, but uh, the, the innovation remains the same. You don't need to change the innovation. All you change is this gain. Before, in the ensemble Kalman filter, this is a matrix, but it's the same matrix for all particles, so to speak. All right, it's a covariance matrix, and you apply that covariance matrix to all the realizations of, of your filter. Now, in this feedback particle filter, this becomes a function of X itself. It's no longer constant. And that's why I need this little dot here, because I now actually would need, and I'm not going to do it in detail, but I need now to think about Stratonovich and Eter. And this is Stratonovich, for those that know what I'm talking about. It's just a matter how in, I interpret this equation, but don't worry about this for now. It's just the important thing is the structure is exactly the same, and to, to make it statistically correct, so you're really solving the real filter problem in, in the nonlinear context, you need to find the Q, a K, that solves this elliptic equation. So this is, um, this is the divergence, um, and this becomes an elliptic equation if we also make the approximate, uh, you, you make the choice that <clears throat> K at T is equal to gradient, the gradient of a potential at time T. Right, you get a scalar elliptic PDE you need to solve. There's a right-hand side that uh, measures uh, the difference between the observed quantity and its expected value under the filtering distribution. Right, so you, again, numerically, of course, you need to approximate that thing. Uh, but elliptic PDEs, there are lots of ways of doing it. And if you find the best constant approximation, you're back to the ensemble Kalman filter. Again, think of finite elements where you restrict your space to a subspace of all functions. So if you take the simplest, where k is just the space of all constant functions, then you get the ensemble Kalman filter. And if you allow more variations, like you take a little bit more complicated um, space, finite element space, you can, um, you can get um, um, more complicated approximations and maybe also more useful approximations. Um, now, um, there's, at this point, there's also um, a beautiful link mathematically to the, 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 the theory of optimal transportation, um, uh, which is another huge field, uh, but that's basically what comes in here. Um, but I'm not gonna go into details here. Okay, so let me see. Um, oh yeah, let's, um, oh yeah, we're almost done. Okay, almost, perfect, perfect timing. So, the backward also works. It's actually easier. So the backward thing, if you want to do the smoother, uh, you can also, uh, um, you, you basically just take the log of your filtering distribution. So in the forward sweep, you do the filtering with the feedback particle filter formulation. Backward, you solve this equation with this augmentation. And, and then if you want to find this change, 
you, you go yet again forward. So you go forward to find the filtering solution, you go backward to get the smoothing distribution, and then you say, okay, now I want to find this optimal change of the drift term that guides me to where I should go, the U, right? In the Gersanov theorem I had before. So you want to find the U, here it is. It's the log of the ratio of the filtering over the, or the smoothing over the filtering distribution. So this is the term that guides you. This is the solution of the optimal control problem given by your data simulation problem. Right, so this is the control law. And, and in principle, um, if you want to do systematic model correction terms, if you want to find them, then you probably what you want to do, this is time dependent um, and state dependent. So if, if, if you average out the time component, that would, if, if you have, if everything is consistent, I believe uh, that average should go to zero. So every realization of the data, of course, leads to a sort of a control term, but in, t in time, it should average out if everything is coherent. If it's not coherent, then that will lead to a consistent part, and that's probably something you should add to your model. Okay, so here are some references. Um, so uh, Jatswinski is still a classic. Uh, there's um, uh, a book on data assimilation which is uh, more mathematical than the one I wrote with Colin Cotter, Cody Law, and Andrew Stewart. They, they also talk about both continuous time, discrete time. They also talk a bit about these measures, but it's still fairly hands-on. I mean, there are examples and, and, and things, so it is, it is a relatively gentle introduction. There's a nice book by Greg Pabliotis on the stochastic analysis. Again, from a physicist's point of view, uh, we had this discussion again on the, in the break here. Uh, stochastic analysis can be absolutely horrendous um, if you go from, come straight from stochastic analysis. I mean, the, the notation, everything is just, it's a nightmare. Um, but there's a physicist approach, and uh, Greg is actually a mathematician, and, but he's also sort of taking this sort of physicist approach. So he's written a very nice book on stochastic processes. Again, our book. This is here on the feedback particle filter. Um, then here, this makes some links to rare event simulation in molecular dynamics because you have exactly the same thing. So you basically, you want to see if a protein does some folding. And you basically have a starting point and you say, I, I want to see if a, uh, um, uh, a, a protein can fold into a certain configuration. You have an idea how this configuration looks like. Then you basically say, I want to get close to this, and you attach a cost to it. And that's the likelihood, right, or your observation uh, in 4D1. And then you have to find a way, I mean, how does the molecule actually get there? And that's a rare event. So you simulate your model, and then most trajectories of the molecule, the folding, they will do all, all of the things, but some very rare. So, so you want to basically uh, find the control term that shows you how the molecule falls. And so the techniques are very similar to what I talked about, except that the motivation and the background is, is, is very different, but it's... Um, and, um, and then um, I think the, the first paper that looked at these continuous time formulations of the ensemble Kalman filters that down there. Um, so there's some of the reference, but I mean, it's, uh, of course, um, uh, we covered a, a huge amount of ground um, this morning, so there's um, uh, many more. But I hope you got sort of the rough picture uh, of how you can sort of extract um, mathematical principles out of these uh, um, uh, out of these concepts and models. And and then in the in the afternoon, I will talk about algorithms, so that will get you back to actual ensemble Kalman filter and, and, and things um, and, um, and how it links up with um, um, ongoing developments in this field. All right, thank you very much.